So last night, I walked with the devil. He who since Genesis has been the nemesis of mankind and I walked hand in hand last night. And he said to me, Shingi, I know we don't always see eye to eye, and yes, it flows within my veins to kill, destroy, and lie, but tonight I'm going to take a minute to boast. So we began our travels coast to coast over the land that I love the most. We started off at the southernmost tip, the continents joined pride, South Africa. For decades, disenfranchised by apartheid, by now standing apart as the continents melt in part. But hold the thought, for in a flash I hear a brother get shot. It's a shame, for the same place I proclaim is earned undesired fame as the world's prime for violent crime. You can imagine my frustration as me and my fellow traveler went on to our next destination, crossing the border to the north, coming forth into Zimbabwe. Once Africa's bread basket, now no longer the case, now merely just a basket case, and face the fact that we gaze upon a place where inflation has risen at a world record setting pace, and the people do their best to get through their days and enjoy. But what can we possibly tell them when 85% of them are unemployed, when they see the cause by their time is that too empty to fight? You get the drift, right? That's when the rest of the night, as we marched over into the beautiful Republic of the Congo to the mystifying sound of the bongos, it is hard to digest that an Eden so fine, blessed with diamonds, worthy only of King Solomon's minds, has played host to the world's deadliest conflict since the world wars. It's like evil's flogging my continent on its back, and we're down to all fours, and we're crawling, crawling into Nigeria where tensions boil, brother against brother, son of the soil, ripped onto opposite sides, ready to kill and die over oil. Feet away from Cote d'Ivoire and Libya, where little, where little done and much is said, we watch as the blood sheds. It's hard to hold high your head when your way is deep in rivers of blood red. In a matter of weeks, the pursuit of power perverts people and produces preposterous freaks, mindless monsters who maim and motivate masses to go into murderous streaks. And over here, I hear the man tell me, yes, you can. Wish I could look back home and tell him, you too, man. But the sound of my voice is drowned by the ginger weed running havoc over Sudan. And as another baby is ripped from a mother's womb over Darfur, I scream to the beast, enough, devil, show me no more. So we walk away. We walk away from a paradise where, in parts, a woman born is more likely to be raped than to learn how to read. In other parts, still, child soldiers have killed dozens by the time they're in their teens. And in other parts, Age has reduced the average human life to less than 30 years, and I love to say I'm tough, but today I'm down on my knees. Even though I'm overseas, pledging allegiance to another land, I've been crying and praying for my sisters and my brothers and family and friends still residing in the motherland. I get up and face the beast, say, devil, why do we have it the worst? Why are we living in death, and why is Africa the hearse? Why have you made this beautiful black skin synonymous with curse? And he looked at me and said, Shingi, I told you I would boast and I'd love to take the blame. All the same, let it be said that humans should be twice ashamed for the guns in children's hands, the abused women, the wars and conflict that caused your continent to bleed. I could never spark the fire if it wasn't, but if it wasn't sustained by human greed. Gluttonous seeds planted by those who you watch as they feed. Corrupt politicians who equate money with the ability to lead. And as another baby starves to death, I hope you're proud of yourselves. You've been the death of your fellow men, and the devil didn't even have to help. Amen. Amen.